analysis, as you all are aware, um, that uh, Eighth Amendment violation would be excessive bail or no bail um, or fixing um, um, an amount that is um, excessive under the circumstances. Um, when fixing, for the purposes of the Eighth Amendment, the excessive bail is defined as bail set at an amount higher than the amount reasonably calculated to ensure the presence of the defendant. When fixing bail in Georgia, trial judge's most foremost consideration is the probability that the accused, if free, will appear at trial, and then um, the court in uh, Coleman goes on to to quote that lesser factors or lesser extent or considerations are the accused ability to pay, the seriousness of the offense, the accused character and reputation. I have heard a lot of evidence today about those particular factors um, in regards to Mr. Williams and his ability to pay and um, the seriousness of the offenses and his character and reputation from, from uh, as presented by Mr. Steele, uh, Ms. Hornsby, as well as uh, Mr. Adams. So um, I, have, I have considered those particular issues. Now also, um, Coleman goes on to say that a defendant who seeks release on bail has the burden of showing roots in the community the defendant does not pose a significant risk of fleeing, threatening the community, committing another crime, or intimidating witnesses. And along with this particular case, uh, the court also has considered the uh, seminal case of Ayala versus the state at 262 Georgia 704. And Ayala gives us the framework in Georgia for the purpose of a pretrial bond is to prevent punishment before conviction and secure the appearance of a person for trial, quoting Roberts versus the State, 32 Georgia Appeals, um, 339. And um, it goes on to say that um, a trial court may release a person on bail if the court finds the following. So I have to look at the first thing that Coleman directs me to look at is consideration of whether or not um, the uh, is the foremost consideration is will he if free appear at trial and then the lesser factors and these are a court may release a person on bail if the court finds one poses no sickness no significant risk of fleeing from the jurisdiction or failing to appear in the court when required Two, poses no significant threat or danger to any person, to the community, or property in the community. Three, poses no significant risk of committing any felony pending trial. And poses no, four, poses no significant risk of intimidating witnesses or otherwise obstructing the administration of justice. And I'm required to explain any reasons if I, if I deny bond to assist the appellate court in this review and that the granting or denial of bond will not be set aside unless there's a manifest and flagrant abuse of discretion. That's Jernigan versus the state, 111 Georgia 307, pinpoint 308, very old case um, from 1903. Um, now, in regards to considering bond for Mr. For Mr. Williams, I have considered uh, the first consideration is if free will he appear at trial and to a lesser extent the other factors uh, and based upon the court's consideration of the proffer the two things that the court has significant concerns about are him being a danger to the community in flight and I'll state for the purposes of the record and purposes of my decision that um, I realize that Mr. Williams is presumed innocent. I realize that he has the presumption of innocence stays with him until the state, by sufficient evidence, is able to prove uh, to a jury's satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt, I should say, um, that uh, he is guilty of the offense or offenses charged. But however, in this particular circumstance, um, there have been significant proffers about 
about Mr. Williams is being a danger to the community, in particular, the state's proffer that they have spoken to, taken proffers from other gang members and people uh, who are in this particular indictment and in, and other, and they're not in this indictment, that he is the leader of the gang, he is dangerous, and if he crosses them, he'll kill them or their families. And the predicate or the, the review of the state, I, I, the concerns that I have are, uh, are the, some of the statements that he's, that he's made about the threats and to others and uh, that have been chronicled in, in particular in some of the um, predicate acts that have been um, stated for the court's uh, consideration. Whether or not those acts, as Mr. Uh, Adams has um, pointed out, because you know, they have to be proven at trial, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a discussion for another day. But at this point in time, in the aggregate, those particular discussions, in particular, the proffer from the people that uh, the state has talked to already, the group chat that, um, that from 2015 starting, Anybody goes into a courtroom and tells God on this truth, they'll be fucking killed, pardon me for the language. And this threat is still being talked about. So that is of a concern to the court in regards to the danger to, um, or threats to persons um, in, the, in the community. So, uh, and, and fact is there's no significant arrest of intimidating witnesses or otherwise obstructing the administration of justice. That is the court's concern the two major concerns that this court has is um, danger to persons and threats to intimidate other witnesses and obstruct the administration of justice. So um, I have some concerns about the flight that I share with Judge, that Judge Wolf also indicated, but, um, and I'm not gonna hold it against him that he is very successful and has significant means, um, but those two factors in, uh, in particular, um, threats to persons and in, in the community or poses significant risk of intimidation of witnesses, otherwise obstructing administration of justice, the court has considered uh, a number of the predicate uh, um, statements and um, and for those reasons in the aggregate, um, I'm going to deny bond at this time. Um, but Mr. Adams, Ms. Hornsby, and Mr. Um, Steele, certainly if um, you should file any other additional motions or things that uh, change, I certainly will reconsider the court's position on bond. I just not lost on me that I have not given your client a bond, but um, you know, that is my decision based upon what I have heard, uh, and I certainly appreciate your advocacy for, on behalf of your client, all of the lawyers thus far who have advocated very well for their clients in, in this particular position. And uh, I will do my level best to make sure that this case gets tried as expeditiously as possible, and if I can get it on the calendar before, uh, before the 9th of uh, January, I will endeavor to do so. So, anything else at this point in time? One thing, Judge. Yes. I'm sorry, I know the court file uh, sent an email to, I think, the Public Defender's Office concerning getting defendants who are presently unrepresented representation. Uh, we wanted to kind of weigh in on that. We filed in a motion today requesting the court to respectfully get them so we can get everybody arranged and get it moved. I want to just give Mr. Mr. Here, I, I, you must think that I have a lot of, of, of power. I really don't. I you know, I mean, I did shit. I, but in all seriousness, I, I've heard from Ms. Bernard, Jean Bernard, and she right now is working on getting people um, assigned. I just want to, the court tells me to bring copies. I just want to, I'm trying to provide copies. Yeah, I, we certainly, if you should, have you given copies to uh, the... Uh, They've been served. Yes, okay, sir. all right. Electronically. Okay, if you'll give those to Mr. Kearns right here, so I think right. Mr. Chamberlain's gone. But we are, we are inherent, the court is inherently sensitive as to that issue. And as soon as um, uh, 
those attorneys can be appointed, and I have some correspondence from Ms. Bernard saying that they are working on that issue right now, and that we will certainly uh, get those people brought over as soon as possible. But uh, and if um, if you all have any other information in regards to that, please let us know. But we are tracking that issue, and I, and I will continue to uh, continue to talk and dialogue with Mr. Chamberlain about that. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything else, folks? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, all right. Thank you for your patience today, folks. Unless you have anything else, uh, we'll be in recess for the time being. Okay? All right, thank you.